morning guys, welcome back to the shop, or should I say lab, because today we are actually going to be taking apart a fuel pump that failed on a hybrid escape. The problem with the fuel pump is that whenever the fuel tank dropped below a quarter or so, it would just get noisy, real noisy, and the pressure would just drop in the fuel system, and of course the hybrid system cut out and they repeated over and over again, I just cycled the key. Um, once you fill the fuel, it came above a certain level and the thing ran just fine, okay? So it was a brand new pump, year old, like brand new Ford pump, latest and greatest, all that good stuff. I pulled the pump out. There's nothing wrong with it. You're looking at it. There's nothing wrong, okay? None of the usual stuff. Uh, so we swapped it out with a new pump. Everything's fine. Vehicle's gone. I kept the old pump because I know a lot of you out there are interested you know, in, in, in tearing stuff like this apart and seeing what, exactly what's going on. We're going to replicate what was going on inside that tank in my bath of water over there. We're going to pump some water and show it what's going on. And we're also going to go over the anatomy of a fuel pump uh, because there's a, a lot of little valves and check valves and stuff like that in there um, that can cause problems with uh, hard starts. Uh, no starts, all kinds of concerns on your Ford also. And it's nice to know what's inside the tank that you can't see, um, so it's easier for you to diagnose it. Let's go over there and check it out. Now this right here is the failed fuel pump from the Hybrid Escape. So let's go over that real quick and how it failed, the bench testing with the uh, bucket of water here, and then we'll get into the anatomy of the fuel pumps that Ford uses, uh, so you can get a better sense of what's going on inside your fuel tank. Uh, to help you diagnose your fuel pressure issues on your Ford. Um, so this one again is from 2015. It's about a year old. The vehicle was an 08, so you know it's been changed at least once. I cross-referenced the engineering number on here. It's the latest and greatest. I don't know why. Electrically, it was just fine. So why was this thing not putting out proper pressure? It's a Ford pump. Come on. Um, well, so I pulled it out, did a quick visual, looked around, looked around. Everything looks beautiful in there, right? just fine um, the fuel sock nice and clean fuel tank immaculate okay so the very next thing i check in a situation like this where and the addition of fuel pretty much corrects the issue is these darn lines right here there's a couple different ones on here um, but these ones you can see how they're bent like this well these are universal fuel pumps to an extent so they do Get compress and extend to accommodate different size tanks on different vehicles model years all that good stuff so look at it. this one actually goes down quite a bit and it, it compresses it and kinks it even more so what like what happens on these is they get dry over time they're kinked like that or bent and then they start getting these slits in them now when they have these slits in them they start shooting out fuel pressure this is the outlet side going out to the engine and then once you fill fuel in here, we get some back pressure on there. It can't shoot out as easy. So therefore, it's able to attain pressure and you're good to go. Once it drops down again, it just happens all over again. So I was looking at this one. Again, it's a year old. It, I doubt it's dry rotted by now and coming apart like that. There wasn't a bit of a leak or anything. So um, we did swap it out with a brand new one. No problems, vehicle's gone, good to go. Um, but let's go ahead and bench test this one uh, to see where the failure point is on here um, in the bath of water. All right, so here is my super secret high-tech lab bath. And here's just the fuel pump, okay? Point the outlet away from us. I'll get soaked with water. Um, now, if you're ever testing fuel pumps on Fords, you'll see this pink wire right here, the black stripe. 90% of the Fords out there, that is the positive. It'd be a thicker wire, and that's the positive going to uh, feed the motor inside the fuel pump here. And of course, um, the black one, which I need to get over here, um, same gauge, 14 gauge or so, is gonna be your ground for the fuel pump. Whereas the other two wires coming out of there, uh, for the fuel sending, you're going to be like, you know, uh, 18 gauge, 16 gauge, somewhere in that region. Um, so sure enough, on this one, it's the same way. So we got wired up, and we're going to test it out on here. I'm going to try to get you a really good angle so you guys can see what's going on here. How about we do something like this? Like this, huh? How about that? 
I want to point towards us. Okay, so here we go. Here we freaking go. So we're powered up. No problems, right? No problems. Now to replicate back pressure in the fuel system and the fuel rail and all that, let's say you're priming the key, it's basically a deadhead. So let's do this. Oh, it helps me press it. So that right there is the pressure relief that's actually right here. And that's doing its job. Once the pressure becomes too great and it's beyond the max pressure for the system, it simply takes this outlet side here. That's the pump right there coming up and going out. And it just dumps it right back into its own little reservoir. So it's doing the right thing. But now watch this. So you deadhead the vehicle, right? You turn the key on, it primes for two seconds like they all do. Now watch. Now watch. Yeah. I'm running it right now. So once it deadheaded like that and the pressure relief came on, it got stuck in that position. Now that doesn't make no sense as far as filling, filling it back up. So what we're gonna do here is fill it up. We're gonna fill it just like we did with fuel. And we're gonna see how it changes. What I'm thinking is gonna lift up on there and block it off so it can't bleed out and we're gonna get our pressure back. So we're basically gonna unstick the valve. We'll see. It's still running right now. And you can see the, the pressure here. Now mind you, this reservoir inside of here is built in so that this always has a good supply of fuel. It's always encased in fuel, keeps it nice and cool. Um, but it also has its own constant fuel supply, no matter what is sloshing around the tank. So this is plenty of fuel in the vehicle right now. Now watch. We start filling it up with fuel. Alright. Got a malfunction here. Let's recreate. Okay, here we go. I'll be able to hold it now. So again, it's stuck in that bleed off position. No fuel at all, barely even coming out of there. Now let's keep filling it and see how it changes. Boom, look at that. The valve is now unstuck and it's just Pouring fuel out like I should. So that was all that noise we were hearing in the tank before uh, on the other video until we filled it up and then it runs nice and quiet like they should. And now of course it's doing the same thing. So yes, that is exactly what's going on here. You gotta remember, we shouldn't have to fill any of this. It's getting fuel from down here. That's where it's sucking it in at down there. Look at that. You gotta baby the thing. So that all made sense. And even when it does um, get that proper level of fuel in there to relief that, it doesn't actually seat back in place all the way. So our pressures were like 30 something instead of 65. Um, so yeah, right there you know it was an internal part that was causing it to just bleed off like that. That makes sense for all the noise 
And then, um, you know, again, none of these parts inside of here are serviceable except for maybe the electric pump, but we know that's good. So you have no choice but to change the whole fuel pump module. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a video on me diagnosing this and the different sounds it makes and the, how it looked in the scan tool and how the vehicle reacted and all that. I'll link to that down below. Now, let's go over the anatomy of one of these fuel pump modules. Uh, as they as Ford calls them because again these this design is used in a lot of Fords It's exactly like this and your yours probably is too And I'm back the battery died on the uh, camera there, but anyways, so once you come inside of here, you're gonna have your um, Power wires going down to your motor right here. This is your actual fuel pump motor And then you're also gonna have wires coming down and over to your fuel sending unit and this is a resistor card right here, you can see. And the, basically the way this, this works on here is you have two different, uh, you know, your, your two different wires right here. And then as the, f the fuel level float goes up and down at your fuel tank level, uh, the resistance of this card changes and just sends that resistance reading back to, in 90% of the cases, your cluster. And it, it figures it out from there. Um, and then it sends the information to the PCM and all that good stuff. Um, so that's how all that works. Now this right here is your check valve. So if you're having fuel drain back issues where, you know, overnight or after a couple hours or whatever, it's a hard start. I mean, you're cranking it over and over again just to get the fuel pressure back up. Or if you cycle the key a couple of times for two second prime each time, like eight times they do it, and all of a sudden it fires like like a brand new engine. Well, it's it's your it's, it's your pressure regulator that's draining back to the tank. On the older vehicles, it's on the fuel rail. On these ones, it's all internal. So on some of them, also there is another one that's always in the tank plus the other one. Um, so you have two different failure points on a lot of the vehicles. Whereas these ones, the returnless systems, is just right here in the tank. So that's the check valve. Again, nothing in here is. Um, you know serviceable so it's just good information to have uh, to isolate where it's at so that'll hold fuel in your um, your rail and your lines and your fuel filter so it doesn't drain back with gravity uh, back into the tank here now this of course is your your pump itself it's coming up to a t-junction here and it feeds over to pass that check valve and up and out and like I said earlier, this is your blow-off valve, basically, okay? This is your pressure regulator for um, your high-pressure spring, basically. So when it gets too high past the calibrated amount, it'll just dump it off in case there is a just complete restriction on the outlet side here. It'll kind of protect the pump and all and keep returning and returning and returning it um, like it failed in this one. So Now down here, this whole thing right here houses... Uh, basically just the fuel pump inside here some baffles and then there's a this whole thing's a reservoir so as the fuel sloshes back and forth in the tank a lot of these tanks don't have these big baffles um, you want to have constant source for that fuel pump so this is a reservoir it comes in it fills the reservoir and it keeps it full at all times um, this right here is the actual inlet sock on there uh, to to screen the large debris before they come in to protect you know any kind of valve in here uh, the fuel pump itself and stuff like that before it's sent out to the fuel filter so that's the basic gist of how these pumps are um, built and all different points on here that can fail all right so hopefully you enjoyed this video you found it informative uh, but most importantly I hope it helped you fix your Ford yourself. I'll see you later guys.